I wasn't gonna get any nightmares from this book and then I did have a nightmare. Oh my god, why do we always forgive handsome men when they do stupid things? That sh ended intensely. Do I wish I loved it more until so far than I actually do? Yes, I do. <laughs> so sorry, Noelle. Oh my god, I do hope that I will love the third book that I'm gonna read for this challenge. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. In today's video, I will be reading all of Noelle Gallagher's favorite books. I think most of us are familiar with Noelle and her wonderful channel, her wonderful personality. She is the queen of booktube and she has been on the rise since 2020. I started following her around April and I was just so impressed with her video style, her editing skills and just the overall look and I've become just really obsessed with her. And then I came with a brilliant idea somewhere in September of 2020, so six months ago, that I was gonna read her favorite books or at least some of her favorite books. So I went on to her channel, I kind of figured out which titles I would be most interested in picking up. They were a little bit out of my comfort zone but I was so excited to get to them and I chose three books. Misery by Stephen King, Call Me By Your Name by Andre Akimam, and which one did I pick to? I forgot it already. <laughs> and The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. And the results of this like reading vlog, reading Noelle's favorites video are interesting. And I don't know if Noelle wants to still be friends with me after I, you know, show you guys this video. Like I said, I filmed these books and my reading experience over the course of four months, I believe, and I am so excited to finally get to it and upload it on my channel. The reason why it has taken me so long to finally upload a new video just in general on my channel, it's been two weeks and you might know the reason why if you follow me on my Instagram. So if you don't, definitely check out my Instagram. Links are in the description box down below. But um, I got scammed. <laughs> I thought I was gonna do a sponsored video with a company and I was so excited for it because I've literally only done one sponsorship on my channel before, which was in my previous video. So I was excited to have another one. And then after a little bit more of like research and back and forth really strange communication, I came to the conclusion or found out that the company that they were trying to pretend to be and like this whole sponsorship idea was fake and basically afterwards they tried to hack my YouTube account which is absolutely great and because I thought I was gonna do like this big sponsorship with them I was waiting for their approval and more information and I didn't film a video and then just that whole hacking thing happened and I was super stressed and then I just decided to like take a little break and kind of just like try to make sure that all of my gmail passwords and everything was hopefully secure enough so that they wouldn't be able to hack into my account so little story time before we're actually gonna get into the video oh and also yes i did get my nose pierced i think you might have seen that i'm so excited about that i think it suits my face really well and i'm loving it already and those were all the little things i wanted to share with you before actually going on to the reading vlog situation it's just it's been great this past week it has been interesting so the first book that I read that was one of Noelle's favorites. I mean, if you follow her, you know that she is a Stephen King fan. I think I don't know anyone who loves Stephen King more than she does. And my plan for 2020 was to read a Stephen King book. That was one of my reading goals. So I thought, wow, this is the perfect opportunity. And the book that Noelle always talks about is Misery. And in this book, we follow our main character. I believe his name was called, yes, Paul Sheldon. And he is a famous writer for like the Misery series. And on one evening, he's just like riding his car, riding his car, driving his car. <laughs> but there's this like huge snowstorm and he gets into a car accident and the one who kind of like saves him finds him is his biggest fan called Annie Wilkes but what Annie doesn't know when she takes Paul into her home and tries to take care of him is that Paul killed off Misery in his latest novel and she gets really mad and Paul basically has to write a new Misery novel for Annie Wilkes and it's just oh my god creepy. That's all I'm gonna say, but let's see what I thought of this book whilst reading it. Good evening, my sweet petunias. Do you see what I did there? And if not, I'd be disappointed. <laughs> okay, so it is the evening. I have read 
about, I'd say, 20% of misery and feeling okay about it. Like, the audiobook makes the experience, I think, so much better. Like, I usually find that with books, by the way, that the audiobook just adds something to the reading experience. Um, I think the narrator, she does it so very well, especially the very creepy anger issues that Annie has. Like, she does them so well. I think his writing style is something that I need to get used to. It is a little bit on the slow side. Sometimes it's also a little bit confusing and I need to see like, okay, how is he writing the story right now? Sometimes you have kind of flash Flashbacks and then in the now but you also have Paul's inside dialogue so sometimes it was a little bit confusing. I am liking it though but I wouldn't say that I'm like amazed until so far but it's not like horror until so far like Annie is really creepy. She does creep me out but it's not as if like I am not able to sleep right now. Hi guys, so I am currently like 20 pages into part two. And right now Paul is writing the new misery novel and I think it's really cool that we also get to see little parts of that story. And by the way, I told you yesterday or like a couple of days ago that, you know, I wasn't gonna get any nightmares from this book and then I did have a nightmare. I dreamt that I was like in my room, stuck in my room and that someone was screaming from behind like super loudly and then I woke up from that scream in the middle of the night in my dark room at 4 a.m. and then I was just like well I guess this book is doing something right for me okay I'm on page 244 and something intense is gonna happen like if you have read this book I think this will be one of the most shocking things that's gonna happen question mark listening to the audiobook um, and I just want to record my reaction like I'm already like freaked out and when I was reading this I thought okay I need to put on my camera because I was literally listening to this book and reading it like this yeah let's start reading the audiobook again and be shocked. I have nine minutes left of this like part of the story. I believe that there are four parts so I'm almost done with part two and it's gonna end I think really intensely so okay let's go. <laughs> wow part two um <laughs> that sh ended intensely. Annie Wilkes is such a strange, intense character that I've ever read about. She is so smart and so unstable that you're constantly on the edge of your seat like how is she gonna react to certain situations and you just don't know it. I'm about to start part three and I'm so curious to see where the story is gonna go. This was so intense but I do know that I am really enjoying this book and I wasn't really expecting that when I started reading the beginning just because Stephen King's writing style is super descriptive sometimes, a little bit too much but I'm gonna read some more in this book and I also need to do some things for school and stuff like that but I am so excited to finish this book hopefully this weekend like i only have about 110 120 pages to go so i think that will definitely happen oh my god you guys big time jump here today it is wednesday the 16th of december so here we have misery by stephen king i finished this book at the end of september so like two months have almost passed so much has happened there's a hair on my phone and i can't get it off <laughs> i was so hooked on this story especially at the ending because it was so incredibly intense. I did not love Stephen King's like writing style in this book as much as I hoped I would, but like some of the things that happened in here are just fucked up. <laughs> And they really did shock me. This book definitely has intrigued me into picking up other Stephen King novels as well. I don't think that he will become my favorite author, but I do like his twisted way of like storytelling and just how creepy they are. And I think it was a perfect book to read at like the end of September. So in the end, when I finished Misery, I think I gave it like a three and a half out of five stars. But the main thing that did get me through this book is the audiobook because the narrator was so perfect like she narrated the story in such a creepy mysterious way totally gave me chills <laughs> i am very excited to pick up another stephen king book maybe around halloween or like the fall times i think that is gonna be perfect and i'm planning on reading the shining then because it's a classic and i've been meaning to watch the movie for so long already but every single time that someone asks me shall we watch the shining i'm like no i gotta read that book first but let's try and make that happen in 2021 Next up, I read something completely different genre-wise and the other book that I then picked up that Noelle loves. She even got a tattoo 
dedicated to this whole story is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is like an office romance book and first of all I rarely read romances just because I'm still very unsure of whether this is a genre that's something for me and in this one we follow Lucy Hutton, baker of cakes, charming assistant, and professional nice girl, is waging war. She's got the whole office on her side except for tall, dark, and charmless Joshua Templeman. He's been nothing but hostile since the moment they met and now it feels like nothing matters as much as taking him down. Trapped together under the fluorescent lights, they become entrenched in an addictive rivalry. First the staring game, the mirror game, VHR game. Lucy can't let Joshua beat her at anything, especially when a huge promotion comes up for grabs. Finally, she's going to destroy the man she can't seem to get out of her office. The man she hates. The man who's taking up far too much space in her head. Ooh. <laughs> if Lucy wins, she'll be Joshua's boss. If she loses, she'll resign. The race is on, but the real games have only just begun. Let's see what I thought of the hating games. Okay, so I am currently on chapter 11, page 129 of The Hating Game, and do I wish I loved it more until so far than I actually do? Yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, I was prepared from the beginning of starting this book. Oh, the glare again, taking it off. But even though I was prepared for the hate to not be really hate at the beginning of this book, I'm still disappointed. It's really quite unbelievable that these characters like actually hate each other. It's more like they are just teasing each other constantly, but they don't want to admit that they are extremely attracted to each other. <laughs> and I do notice that I don't really love the work set of this story like I don't really care about work <laughs> um, but Lucy and Joshua are also kind of competing for this new position at their company it's kind of like them wanting to destroy each other's careers but they are extremely attracted to each other at the same time sometimes the things that are being described are just a little bit ridiculous like our main character will be completely like hating on Joshua but then she's like oh he's so attractive but he has a flat stomach but he has big biceps and I'm like Lucy, just admit that you're horny. And I'm just like, okay, we get it. He is a handsome man. But like, he's so shitty to her sometimes. Like, oh my god, why do we always forgive handsome men when they do stupid things? Yeah, I am not loving this until so far. I'm so sorry, Noelle. Oh my god, I do hope that I will love the third book that I'm gonna read for this challenge. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. I just don't know if reading a romance novel is something that I desperately need in my life at the moment. Maybe I'm just not really in the mood, you know, in the mood, romance. <laughs> I hate my jokes. <laughs> I uh, will update you guys on my opinions if I read another third of this story and just fingers crossed that it will be a little better. <laughs> Hi guys, so it is the 27th of December and um, today I also packed some more Etsy orders. Thank you so much for the people who ordered something off of my Etsy shop, that means a lot. And in the meantime of packing those orders, I also listened more to The Hating Game. I only have two or three chapters left. So I'm gonna listen to the audiobook right now and finish reading this. Until so far, I have been enjoying this book. Quite a lot I wanted to say, but that's not true. I've just been enjoying it. But I don't know if romance is really my genre, but also I'm just not loving the pairing in the story. Like I definitely, definitely feel the sexual tension between them and I just want them to have sex. <laughs> so Sally uh, Thorne is doing a good job with that, but it's not as if I feel like they would be an amazing couple or something. I don't ship them in like a relationship and I do feel like that's kind of what they both want out of this. Let's finish this book and give you the final update. Okay, my hair is a bit of a mess. It's really poofy, but I just finished reading The Hating Game and I'm sad to say it was not really my thing. I'm so sorry, Noelle. I know that in her uh, past couple of videos that she's just uploaded with my most disappointing reads of 2020 that it does hurt when someone says that they didn't love the book that they love. I'm sorry for hurting you. <laughs> I am 
glad that I finished it and that I can pick up another book. It's just not that I really disliked it. It's just that I really wanted to love it and I just didn't. <laughs> okay, so I know that they've just finished recording this movie, I think, and I am really excited to see how this book translates onto the screen. The main thing that I always say about books is that characters are super important to me and even though like also with Misery I didn't have like a real connection with the characters, I also didn't have that with this one. But with Misery the plot is also really important and that kept me hooked and this plot just was a little lackluster for me. There is like a wedding involved in this book and like going to a wedding and stuff like that and that was really quite entertaining but before that I just didn't really care about anything but mm, what can you do? <laughs> I think I came to the conclusion that this book was not it for me. I think I gave this a two and a half out of five stars and then lastly um and definitely least, I read Call Me By Your Name by Andre Akiman, or did I actually read it? Hi, it's Editing Sabine here because I found out I forgot to tell you what Call Me By Your Name is about. So I'm gonna give you guys the synopsis right now. Call Me By Your Name is the story of a sudden and powerful romance that blossoms between an adolescent boy and a summer guest at his parents' cliffside mansion on the Italian Riviera. Unprepared for the consequences of their attraction, at first each feigns indifference. But during the restless summer weeks that follow, unrelenting buried currents of obsession and fear, fascination and desire in intensify their passion as they test the charged ground between them. What grows from the depths of their spirits is a romance of scarcely six weeks duration and an experience that marks them for a lifetime. For what the two discover on the Riviera and during a sultry evening in Rome is the one thing both already fear they may never truly find again. Total intimacy. Let's see <laughs> what my thoughts and opinions were on Call Me By Your Name. Be prepared. <laughs> Hi guys, it is January 11th and I think today might be the day that I pick up Call Me By Your Name by Andre Akiman, I think is how I would pronounce his last name. I believe I have the audiobook of this one on script as well, so I'm very excited. It is also really, really short. I'm hoping that I will love this book more than The Hating Game because it is also a romance, but I feel like this one is gonna have a little bit more of like a lasting impression, if I can say it like that. I look ugly. <laughs> we all have our good days and our bad days. Um, I feel like this is not my, my best day. Oh my god. <laughs> it's getting worse the more that I touch it. Well, we're just gonna have to deal with it, I guess. Yesterday I read up until page 38 of Call Me By Your Name and I'm really disliking it. Oh my god. I really do not like this. And the main reason why I'm not liking it is I do not like Andre Akiman's writing style. It is just, I feel so distant from the story. Our main character is basically just speaking to himself and that is the way that this story is being told and I just don't like it. Also, I feel like Andre Akiman writes really, really long sentences and even though my English is really quite good, sometimes I find it a bit hard to follow. So I sent Noelle a DM that I was starting this book but that I was not feeling the writing style and it just, I don't know, I'm not liking it. So I told her if I'm halfway through the book and I'm still not liking it, I'm gonna DNF it or does it get any worse? Like, can you kind of give me an indication of does it get better or should I just just DNF it and she's like just DNF it right now like the descriptions in this book are so detailed and she told me that it's only gonna get more descriptive as the story goes on I'm gonna try and read up until page 63 which is the end of part one and if I still don't like it at that point I'm already gonna DNF the book Okay, so I feel like Elio's love infatuation with Oliver is really quite toxic and I'm gonna give you an example by reading this quote. I wanted him gone from our home so as to be done with him. I wanted him dead too. So that if I couldn't stop thinking about him and worrying about when would be the next time I'd see him, at least his death would put an end to it. I wanted to kill him myself, even, so as to let him know how much his mere existence had come to bother me, how unbearable his ease with everything and everyone, taking all things in stride, his tireless, I'm okay with this and that, his springing across the gate to the beach when everyone else opened the latch first to say nothing of his Oh my god, this sentence! Oh my god, it goes on and on and on. This is why I can't follow it. <laughs> I was just gonna let you guys go and you know leave you with that quote but then it goes further on if i didn't kill him then i'd cripple him for life so that he'd be with us in a wheelchair and never go back to the states 
If he were in a wheelchair, I would always know where he was and he'd be easy to find. I would feel superior to him and become his master. Now that he was crippled? Elio, what the f*** is going on inside of your head? This is really messed up. <laughs> Do you understand? Why I don't want to continue on with this book. Let's read some more and see if I have some other weird quotes for you as well. This is insane. I was almost finished with reading part one and I thought that the weird quotes were over, but here we go. Helio is going through Oliver's personal belongings just because he wants to find something, I guess. And he says, Hanging on a hook was this morning's red bathing suit, which he hadn't swum in, which was why it was hanging there and not drying on the balcony. I picked it up, never in my life having pried into anyone's personal belongings before. I brought the bathing suit to my my face then rubbed my face inside of it as if I were trying to snuggle into it and lose myself inside its folds. It gets even worse. So this is what he smells like when his body isn't covered in suntan lotion. This is what he smells like. This is what he smells like. I kept repeating to myself, looking inside the suit for something more personal yet than his smell and then kissing every corner of it, almost wishing to find hair, anything, to lick it to put the whole bathing suit into my mouth and if I could only steal it, keep it with me forever. Okay, I have two pages left and then I'm gonna DNF it and watch the movie because all of my friends have been telling me that the movie is so much better. Oh my God, and it even continues on. I wanted to come in his suit and leave the evidence for him to find there. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I basically just gave up on this book when I reached part two, which is on page 67. It was a super short book though, but I just, I couldn't handle it anymore. Then I watched the movie and I know that like everyone was obsessed with it back then, but I felt so underwhelmed. I also didn't like the movie, so this was just not it for me. This reading experience of reading Noelle's favorite books wasn't the best and I feel really sad about it. Hi guys, editing Sabine here. I also want to make sure that I'm not trying to like shade anyone or for that case Noelle for her liking the books and the fact that I completely did not because it might come across that way looking back at all the footage I filmed right now. Read whichever stories you want, whatever you please. This is just my own personal experience and I thought it would be very interesting and funny to share it with you because I just find it so fascinating to see how Noelle's opinions and my opinions are so completely different from each other even though we are reading the same book. It's just I wished so badly that I would love these books as much as she did, but I didn't. But I just want to make that clear. Not shading her, not shading anyone who liked these books, just my own opinion. <laughs> Noelle, I'm so sorry. I wish I just loved them as much as you do. I hope you can forgive me and I hope you won't hate me. <laughs> but I also want to make more of these like reading ex booktubers favorite books. If you have any suggestions for booktubers you want to see me read their favorite books from, is that sentence grammatically correct? I don't think so, but we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> then just leave that in the comment section down below. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And if you don't follow me on all of my social media pages yet, links are also in the description box and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.